Let's have a look at the seven crazy ways that Manus AI can be used for academia and research. Manus AI isn't just another chatbot, it's the next evolution of AI, which is agentic AI. Let's take a look at all the ways Manus AI can be used, all the way from planning to communicating your research at the end. It's pretty cool, let's check it out. So let's say you want to do a PhD, but you don't know what topic to do it in. Manus AI can do deep research to help you find the perfect topic for you. Okay, let's check it out. So over here, we've got um, a simple prompt, which is, can you find research gaps that could form the foundation of a PhD project in OPV devices? So then it went away and it did all of the research for you. Here, it was looking at all of the um, uh, websites. It's gonna involve uh, reviewing recent literature, identifying current challenges and future research directions blah 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 you can sort of like you know watch it doing all of this but ultimately it gave me this at the bottom identifying research gaps and so if we scroll to the top blah, 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 you can see that here we've got identifying research gaps we've got an introduction but this is what we're really interested in are these themes so we've got material development and just a really nice summary of all of the things you can do to sort of like create a PhD topic for yourself then we've got here device stability and degradation and then we've got theme three and we've got theme four. Why can't I say that? Theme four, there we are, done it. Theme five, device physics and characterization. Theme six, and I really like this novel applications part because this is where you can really find the bits that really sort of like speak to you as a PhD student. Like you should look at this list and go, yeah, that's exciting because if you don't do that, then you're not gonna spend sort of like three plus years on that research, are you? So here we are, novel and uh, yeah, that's it. So at the beginning of any research project, you should probably run something like this just to see what the research gaps are to make sure you are aligning yourself with the appropriate sort of research topics and questions. So that's the first way and it gets better. Check this one out. As a researcher, you should be across all of the literature all the time and that sounds like a big ask doesn't it but with Manus AI we can actually ask it to look for influential papers and this is exactly what I did so here I said I am a researcher working on OPV devices find the latest most influential papers in this field from the last two years so I didn't tell it how many I'm just expecting it to sort of like look at citations look at impact and other metrics to say these are the papers that you should know about so then it went away and it said it will find it from the past two years which is great and it will identify highly cited papers and those published in high impact journals. So that's great. That's exactly what I would look for if I was doing this manually by myself. And then it goes away, it does all the stuff. And down here, we can see we've got a recent report on the most influential papers and it gives me three papers and they are linked as well. So it tells me the DOI, when they were published, the journal and also sort of the title. And I love this, like a little bit of a summary and it goes that little, step deeper by giving you a significance. So beyond the rec record efficiency, blah, 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 this is the 94% efficiency after one year in ambient storage. That's pretty bloody good. When I was doing my PhD, it was nowhere near this. So we can see it's done a really good job at pulling out that stuff. This top one doesn't have a link, but it does have a title and a DOI. Um, but ultimately I would be running this. Oh, there's a link. Perfect, it's down here, down the bottom. Why didn't I scroll further? Naughty me. Um, but ultimately references, this is where I would go sort of every so often, every six months, just run something like this, just to make sure you are over the most key, important, influential papers in your field and let me know if it found the right ones for you. Stay around to the end of this video because the last thing I'm gonna show you is something I've never seen before. Throughout your PhD and your research, you'll be doing lots and lots of data sort of like generation. Now, the one thing about that data is you need to turn it into something so you can communicate it with your PhD supervisor. And the one thing I did in the past is just sort of like, you know, report on little stories, on progress, where I'm going next. And Manus AI makes that super, super easy. Let's check it out. So up here, you can see that I've put in some raw data files. They're really, really horrible raw data files. They're just like exactly what comes from a machine. And I just said, these are some four point probe measurement devices for my research on transparent electrodes. Extract the key findings and future work I should present to my supervisor. This means that you're just making sure that you're 
giving the right information to your supervisor and also you've got the future directions because the future directions really gives them confidence in you and they go oh yeah I like that and having future directions just means you know where you're going it gives you confidence it gives you momentum that is all very important so here you can see that it did all of its magic and then down here we've got analysis and presentation summary so this is what I'm interested in here presentation summary transparent electrode analysis so here we've got the samples that it, I gave it the four point probe method the key findings this was the key findings these are the things that I want to make sure are communicated efficiently to my PhD supervisor when I'm doing my presentation but future work recommendations these are the things I now know that in my uh, you know my supervisor meeting or my symposia these are the things that we need to discuss of all of these six things what are the most important things where does my priority lie where does my supervisor's priority lie do they see me doing stability tests morphology studies process optimization each one of these is a little study on its own and that's how you snowball your results to actually get enough data for a thesis so these future recommendations based on raw data I like that a lot. Once you got your pretty little figures and schematics, let's try to turn that into something that actually benefits your career, which is peer-reviewed papers and stories that you can tell the world. So here, all I did was put in five figures that I had generated and created, and then I said, use these figures to create a story structure for a peer-reviewed paper submission. Then it did its magic, and down here we can see you've got loads and loads of files, but ultimately it's this sort of thing up here. It's the formatted academic paper, maybe paper structure outline if you didn't want to rely on that so much but you can see it's given me everything I would need to write about in this story to make sure that it passes peer review I really like this formatted academic paper once again we're not copying and pasting we're using it as a collaborator we're saying what sort of stuff is it included what sort of stuff do I like I can use this to influence my own peer reviewed paper writing and you can see then it gives me an introduction it gives me experimental and also it gives me all of the Kind of um, sort of uh, story pathways that I could take. So it's saying, first of all, it talks about structural properties. Start with figure three, then figure four. So using this just to sort of like create your own story structure is fantastic. It's really great for acad academia and research. And a lot of people always say to me like, how do I know when I've got enough for a peer reviewed paper? If you're not sure, create the figures. You should be creating the figures anyway to communicate to your PhD supervisor. Then put them in here and just be like, have I got a story structure? or put them into chat GPT, whatever, put them into something to be like, have I got a complete story that I could send off for peer review? Now, I know there's issues with data. I know there's issues with security, but there are companies providing sandboxes to universities so they can work with sensitive data. Just make sure you're doing it in accordance with your university's guidelines. But ultimately, yes, this is a great way to make sure you are actually producing stories to tell the world because as a researcher, that is your job. Stay around to the end of this video because it gets better and better, I can assure you. Once you've got a draft of that academic paper, then what? Well, normally you send it off for peer review or you send it off to your supervisor or to your collaborators. Now you can do a step before that with Manus AI and I really like it. So check this out. I put in a draft of a paper that I was working on. I said, I am writing a peer reviewed paper and would like feedback on this draft. Suggest improvements and places that a peer reviewer may ask for more information. I've had so many papers come back where they're just like, put this, you know, what, what happens here? Do this, does this blah, blah, blah. And you're like, no, it's just, no. I've told a story, this is good enough, that's like further research. That's what you always say when they ask for more. You just go, that would be the subject of another paper. But ultimately here, we're being on the front foot about it and we're saying, what would they actually ask? So I put in the paper and then it's given me a feedback on draft paper and I'm very, very impressed with the level and the detail that it's given me because here we've got feedback on a draft paper, general comments, just like a, you know a reviewer would put general comments and say, yes, it's good, yes, it's not good. Hang on. No, it's not good. Yeah, that's what I mean. And then over here, we've got specific comments by section. Love that. It's broken down the abstract, the introduction, materials and methods, and everything that I would want to know about each individual section. Mwah. Yes, yes, yes. And then we've got figures and tails, language and flow, and then potential peer reviewer questions. So figure of merit. Can you provide a standard reference? Process uh, temperature, work function, control experiments. All of these things are things that I should be thinking about now if I'm thinking about putting this up for peer review. Now, 
Do I agree with all of these? Of course not, but that's my job as an academic to go, I agree with this. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to ignore these things. And as you sort of like progress in your career, you get a much better sense of what's important. But early on, just having them all thrown at you and addressing each one is just going to be so valuable. And Manus AI makes that super easy. So let's say you've just published a peer-reviewed paper and you want to sort of like let the world know about it or you're producing a poster presentation for a symposia or conference. Now, in the past it was about going through taking your paper or taking your research and trying to sort of distill it down into its most uh, impactful results so that you can sort of put it on a poster or put it in a presentation. Now, I was thinking to myself, this often struggles with the idea of an academic poster or an academic presentation, but what it does do really well is create dashboards. What is an academic poster if not a dashboard for your research where it's all just in little boxes and then people can look at it and go, oh, I understand that. Yes. Oh, that's good. Bullet points, a small amount of word, an ability to get sort of like a visual representation of your work very, very quickly. That's what a poster is. It's like a dashboard. So check this one out. I said here, Turn this paper into a dashboard accessible to the public with key conclusions, interactive features, and take home messages. So then I put in my peer reviewed paper and all the way down here, we had something which was bloody awesome. So I've got access to the public dashboard here and I can click on that and it will take me out to the dashboard. So this now is publicly accessible, but I'm not really interested in promoting this as it is. What I'm using it is as a structure for a poster presentation because you can see it's put it in little boxes just like a poster so I should have an abstract or summary and look how many words there are that is the amount of words you need for a poster presentation or just a sort of like presentation on PowerPoint even keep the words small and putting it into a dashboard like this keeps the word and the language sort of like really concise and um, a small amount of text which is just what we want so here we got abstract or summary problems addressed so this would be you know why you're doing it motivation P uh, proposed solution what you did and then this is what we want key performance metrics. I love that it's sort of like done a little bit of an interactive thing here. It's got pop up so useful if you're online but if not it could show you the sort of information you can present on your poster. Clearly you'd put more but this clearly that it thinks that this is the most important thing which is right because it's for transparent electrode materials so I want sheet resistance and optical transmission and here the figure of merit which is stated as the highest published for nanowire composites at the time which it was. I don't know if it is anymore but here we have the OPV device efficiency, 90% of ITO control devices. So this is the information I would want to make sure is front and center of anything I communicate. And now it just makes it so easy because you don't need to guess what is important. It pulls it out for you. Then we've got the fabrication methods and conclusions and take home messages, obviously the reference down the bottom. So this is a great way to distill down your work into something that is accessible, not only to scientists, but could help you sort of like create the right story to tell the public. Absolutely love that sort of stuff. And so creating a dashboard will allow you to essentially create a little poster, you know, a little bit of design into this. Boom, you got yourself a research poster. Love it. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about academics and how they're using deep research. I think you'll love it.